Hi, my name is Clark Miller, and today I'm going to be talking to you about ethanol. Now, ethanol is a biofuel that can come from really a variety of sources. Uh, typically, that main source is going to be corn, but it can be anything from sugarcane, wood, or even waste products from starch and sugar production. To produce ethanol, the biomass of, from the sources I've just listed is mixed with yeast and fermented. And then from that fermentation process, CO2 and mash is produced. The mash is then distilled, rectified, and dehydrated to create ethanol. And then actually from the distillation process, you can get some stillage, which can then be converted into fertilizer. So there's not too much waste coming out of this whole production, the biggest waste factor being CO2. And obviously more, a lot more CO2 will be produced in the transportation and use of ethanol. But since ethanol comes from biomass, all that CO2 can be converted back into biomass through photosynthesis with the added energy from the sun. Now, I'm sure a lot of you will just go to the gas station, put in your standard 87, and go along your way and not think too much of it. Now with ethanol, I'm asking you to think a whole lot more about it, but it's not as bad as it seems. I think the first thing we need to talk about is, well, can your car take ethanol? And it's an easy step to check. You just gotta check if you either have a yellow gas cap or one of these flex fuel badges that are pictured, then you're good. You can run E85 or some flex fuels. Now let's first talk about the flex fuel systems in your car before we talk about the flex fuel. So if your car has flex fuel, that means it can run any mixture of ethanol and gasoline smoothly. Um, they really come in a wide variety of vehicles. You can get them on your basic economy cars, or even some of your more luxury, sporty cars like this Buick Regal Grand Sport that I have pictured. Now, I actually have a bit of experience using some ethanol fuel. Um, funny enough, my friend had a Buick Regal Turbo, and I drove around a Ford Focus very similar to the one pictured for a while, and I put flex fuel in it on a few occasions. Um, I was really curious to see what all this was about. Um, especially because it's now really just starting to become prevalent in the East Coast. Um, my biggest pushing factor was the fact that it is much, much cheaper, as you can now see here, even though these gas prices are a little dated, which was always nice. But um, other than that, you know, I didn't notice too much else in a car like the Ford Focus. And as you can see here, we have the different fuels. The Flex Fuel contains at least 51% ethanol, while uh, E85 is... 85 parts ethanol to 15 parts gas. Now, that leads me into my first pro of using ethanol, is it saves you quite a lot of money. Um, as you can see there, it's about a dollar cheaper than premium fuel, which I unfortunately have to use. Um, so if you're looking to get the most out of your buck for your car, ethanol could be the way to go. Second pro is performance. Now, putting flex fuel or any level of ethanol into that Ford Focus, I couldn't tell a thing. I mean, there wasn't really anything there to begin with, and the ethanol definitely didn't help it. But if you make some proper modifications, the ethanol can definitely be that last pushing power you need to get your car where you want it. And the third pro is just more eco-friendly. You know, it lives off a continuous cycle. Now, obviously, all, not all that CO2 is going to be reabsorbed by the plants, but at least a good bit of it will be. And it's much, much cleaner burning than standard gasoline. But that's not to say that ethanol is flawless. There's definitely a few cons to using ethanol in your car. The first one is you're gonna lose some fuel economy. Now it works out so that you'll be spending less to go the same distance using ethanol as it is much cheaper, but you'll be filling up more often. So if you don't like spending time your gas at the gas station, ethanol might not be for you. The second con is they can add a little bit of increased wear to your engine. Now, it's not entirely known yet how much wear that this can add, and it definitely depends on how the fuel is maintained, which is actually going to lead me into the third point, is that ethanol degrades at a much, much quicker rate than gasoline, which is the oil-based. Because this is bio-based, it's a biofuel, it can deteriorate much, much quicker. So a lot of people who end up running ethanol on their vehicles will have to test gas at each gas station they go to, and if they don't like the quality, and they're moving on to the next one. So it can definitely create a big headache for a lot of people. 
So now you're probably thinking, oh, well, there's, that, that's quite a bit. But don't worry, there's some good upsides. Some really good upsides in the performance department of ethanol. And this is definitely where I have my most exposure to the world of ethanol fuel. Now, ethanol is not as prevalent on the East Coast, but a lot of BMW tuning companies are ba based on the West Coast. So they have a lot of tuning options for it. In fact, here's my friend's newer BMW 335XI. And right now, we hit with its tune, we have it making 385 horsepower to the wheel. If we wanted to run ethanol, we could be making 450 to the wheels, absolutely no problem. And that's just mind blowing to me with only a few little modifications to the fuel pump and injectors, we could be pushing that kind of power. Unfortunately, the same can't go for me as Volkswagen and Audi tuning is the East Coast based where there's just not the ethanol to really support this type of um, production and tunes. And you gotta spend a little bit more money to get a Volkswagen running that. It's unfortunate, but really this ethanol, it proves that we can still have these cars we have today and help reduce our carbon footprint and really stretch that thinning supply of gasoline and oil we have. And it definitely gives me hope that I can still enjoy my cars for the years to come.